Yes, like it's we've been, seen one game. Like uh, so far. Yeah, one game. I, <laughs> As in, I'm, I'm, Sample size. I'm, I'm hoping we see it more during this tournament <laughs> because it's been a while since we've ever had like a 2 1 2 laning phase meta. In fact, uh, I can't remember who it was saying, it, like, basically said, like, we hadn't really had this until War since Warcraft 3 to go like a proper 2 1 2 solid. Um, but Nature's Prophet's one of those ones where he can be your off lane, he can be a combo with somebody. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't require you to to say like we're a two one two, we can easily switch into three. Welcome back, Wraith King. Uh hmm. but uh their global push from LGD is really like it's reliant on the IO doing well. Uh and it's not a simple split push. So OG can delay this game quite nicely to buy time for the morphling. But I still want to see what Topson plays. Like what's their nuka? What's that final one? Do do you, can you get away with an invoker? Can you delay this up? Burn the mana of this entire squad? I think LGD are going to ban that hero. That pick is super good in this game. Quaswex invoker would own. They, it's like it's the best pick in the they, game. Right they now. fifth That's banned so, him in the first game of yeah, the series. So. They're not going to get that. So let's talk. Let's talk alternatives because I really don't think they'll give him invoker. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Skyrath Mage is better this game than last game. Just overall looking at the draft, I feel better about OG this time. Really? I think I think it's it's going to go do you, better. Do you think there's enough sustain though? Like uh, Wraith King's just going to end up getting blade mail again like can you do something else like a like a death prophet for example where you can just let the spirits do the work and you mm. got a lot more sustain through siphon i guess i just don't i don't think that's that good of a topson hero i also don't i, I, I don't sure. do, disagree but. I, I don't think that's what their lineup needs either so what you want now i think is you have a shaker and you have a morphling morphling needs to farm shaker as is not the strongest position for in terms of early movements so i think you need a high tempo mid and i wouldn't consider dp high tempo DP is like, let's go together and push towers. Who's she going to push with? Morphling is not going to help. But, but Shaker high, can barely help. High tempo, like, you'll, you'll need to have a quick rotator. Like, you're not going to have... Well, the Lena was already banned. Like, can, uh, does Topson play Queen of Pain? Like, can you do the, the clearance and give him even more team fight? I think... Well, we'll see what lane matchup he has. Then, they, then we can, they ban Storm. They need, they need some sort of information to go on, because there's a handful of heroes that Topson plays that could be good here. The Monkey King mid could be an option. Oh, they actually banned Drogue. They didn't ban Invoker. I think. Wait, do they, do they think this is a Topson Morphling? No. I, there's always options, right? Either they didn't think about it, they forgot mm -hmm. about it, or they're picking a hero that's really good against Invoker and Lane. But okay. if this hero doesn't beat out Invoker and Lane, I think OG almost going to snap pick it. It's really, really good here. Yeah. I also like... Uh... Just the fact that, like, uh, like LG, like, with the Storm Spirit ban, like, how do they catch up? They're going the Gyrocopter. They're still going to do the Io and Gyro. Oh, Invoker's so, so good. So it's a mid Necro and. Yeah. Yeah, this seems like a really nice game for Invoker and then OG to just play the perfect team fights, play the perfect split push. They won't be able to go high ground easily. Uh, that's where the Gyrocopter is going to work really nicely to just counter push, but it's too good. Had, had to do it. It's a really good pick. I think so. Going into this game, if we were to say that these two teams are evenly matched in terms of skill, which I think is hard to... It's hard to say when you've seen how good LGD has been and how yeah. they won last game, but I feel much better about OG's chances in this game. And were, if those teams were sim, like same skill, uh, I would say OG has an advantage heading into this game. But mm -hmm. it's... I, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, how did they get the this invoker? From, it's the outplay from game one, right? Maybe LG is just looking to challenge themselves early on. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> TI, you know, no. whatever, things are the line, and, oh, whoops, I lost this game, so now we're dropped into the lower bracket. So there's multiple things here, right? Remember when we looked at the first phase, we were like, oh, they're picking the Morphling because they want them to not, they want to intimidate them to not pick Gyro. Yeah. And I was just like, well, well, we'll pick it anyway. Okay, so this Gyro, this Morphling will have Flat Cannon. Please. Yep turns into Gyro. They have Mana Burn against Necrophos, Lion, and Wraith King on the Invoker. There's no way Topson doesn't play Quaswex in this game. It's <laughs> super good. Uh -huh. And OG has a strong offlaner. I think Nature's Prophet is one of the absolute strongest laners this patch. The reason it doesn't get that much love is what do you do next? Like, how do you... It's really, really good to win lanes this patch, and you definitely want to do it. But Furion feels like that type of hero where if you make one or two mistakes, you can fall off really fast, and you need to ride this, like... You need to ride the wave in the game. Yeah. Um, but if if things click for OG in this one, it uh, it definitely looks it looks solid. That's not to say that LGD's draft isn't good, because it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, in isolation, look at this like LGD line, you're like, wow, this is a really good draft. But, with what they're facing, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I dare say this will definitely be a closer game than the last one. Yeah. So.
then and I'm just happy for that. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to a nice close matchup. And it looks like the lanes, obviously the teams are on the same side, so it's, L it's LGD on the on the dire side. So they're gonna try this IR gyrocopter top lane. It'll be against Anna, so they are taking the morphling to the off lane to go with Jirax, and they're putting Seb on the safe lane Prophet and leaves Tops in mid. And then no tell moving around to the silencer. And once again, LGD, it's like they're not changing anything. The Necro in mid is uh, the change-up for the Lina with Somnus. And then they have Chalice as well as Exnova, the offlane, and we got Lion and Wraith King once again. Yep. This, uh... <laughs> do I feel like LGD are now OGing this? Hey guys, we just change one hero. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll play this entire tournament with exactly the same draft. Well, OG definitely didn't OG it based on what you said going into the tournament. That they kept playing the same thing over and over in the qualifier. This is five new heroes. They didn't play any of these last games, so they're completely switching it up in their strategy. A lot of new stuff. Wait, what is that taunt I'm hearing? <laughs> it's, it's the dance of, of the Wraith King. That plays that sound? Yeah. I didn't realize. It does. Alright, Seb. Oh, no tell. They thought they could get in on this one. They get the curse onto two, but it's now Nature's Prophet isolated. X Nova was here too, so Seb needs a body block with his streams, but that won't work. The hand grabs forward. So no tell can only steal one of the runes, but he'll have to wait another six seconds before he can TP out. It'll be fine though. They're not going to chase him down. Maybe he has to go back to the mid lane. And the Wraith King plus Lion Lane wants to be in position from the get-go here with the creeps. I actually TP Nortel towards the top lane uh, straight away. Hmm. So they're actually going to force this into an aggressive try lane for OG and let Seb do his work on bottom. Do you actually then change your lane as LGD to the response of this? Or do you, are you just happy uh. seeing Chalice get farmed? Because this looks like a hard lane for FY and Artmate to, to, to battle in. Even if they do go for the normal like flat cannon early start. This is one of those things that I have a bit of a hard time deciding in games that I play. Like, what's the oh, solution FY. to... Oh, he's That there. damage. Like, Look. what? what's the solution to tri -lanes? Do you Are you like, okay, you know what? You guys are three hero sharing experience, and this patch is not very good. You can't pull in the same way and build your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, because, and then at the same time, well, we have a two-on-one, so we can crush that lane. But in this situation, can you really crush the Nature's Prophet with these two? And how much do you suffer with your two in the safe lane? This well, tri -lane might actually work out very well. You don't crush him, and then what, LTD is going to bring support up to the top lane and not in the mid lane with the Invoker going cost to X. He wants more time just to sit here and, and to level up and have that that short space to have his normal one-on-one -on -one matchup and i'm thinking if you bring up if you bring up the lion do you even win this lane like that's the other thing do they feel like they can match i think they're outmatched in the lane even three on three and i'm saying that with a shaker on one side but it's just the morphling is going to have a great time in this lane yeah he is and jirax is just positioning himself he's just looking for the stunning he actually wanted fy then because that's the target they went for before, Jirax. Okay, careful. He's just trying to provide vision. So they get another curse off. Is support going to arrive? Arme, waveform forward. And it goes after. He's got the creep wave with him. FY solo on life. No tell that one last attack into the trees. It will not be enough. They'll have time. And FY can just south back up Arme as well as himself. The fissure did not connect oh, no on the tail. FY. So they just rock a barrage into no tail. And this aggressive lane of OG was meant to help punish, but... The sustain, the positioning is too good from LGD. That was also a pretty big mistake, I think. They're really overextending there. Throwing out the extra glaives on the gyrocopter was completely unnecessary. They know there's a flask on Tops the IO, dead. so... They just kept chasing him. TP support, a quick tornado. He'll buy time for Norital to get his own curse off. Topson wants to try and turn around, gets the call snap onto Somnus underneath the tower. There's still a creep wave taking damage, but here comes the extra support. Jirax needs to hit on the stun. He's got Fissure available on Somnus. He's got four stick charges up. Hasn't burned them. He'll go shroud first, turns around with both Death Falls as well as the Stick Chargers, and Jirax is forced to retreat, Thompson comes back once more, Colsnap's coming back off cooldown to a second round, onto Somnus, working with no tell. one more attack, won't miss up the hill, so plus two for Silencer, while well, Exnova turns onto the Earthshake, into the tree line, one fish, you will do it! And another plus two in for no tail. One of my favorite. This is something I wasn't thinking about when this game started, I actually really like this pairing of Silencer and Voker, the... Arcane Curse with Cold Snap is very strong. It was super annoying for Somnus to deal with there. And I thought he might survive because he got Ghost Shroud off and the Flask and Stick. He healed from 10% to full. So they basically killed him twice. Mm -hmm. But it worked out. They're burning through so many consumables too. Like FY was bringing so much to the top lane. Another double curse for No Tail. He's got nothing really left. Like in a minute and a half, you know he's going for that shrine. That's the soul ring for FY though. Yep. 
Yeah, I I would say after this... Uh, oh, they're going in. There's your tether forward. In their second they have it. They always love doing it. And FY, so low on life. Even the courier. Did they actually stop to attack that? Meaning FY, the curse is ticking him down. He needs to regenerate. The tango will help him. Oh, my so low too. 12 HP. This heal from FY's tango kept him alive. But it can't keep FY up. Ame just licking his wounds underneath the tier 1 tower. That was so close. Definitely looked like OG would have been able to get both kills if they didn't get that attack off on the Courier instead. Love the turn from Topson. He needed a little bit of space so Somnus can't cancel the regeneration rune that he just picked up. And Topson's taking every kind of bit of high ground advantage he can. They've just switched the sides of the lanes. Meanwhile on bottom lane, Seb is now the number one CSer. Yep. So all this space that gets created, high levels up for the Nature's Prophet, heavy push, here comes your Skeleton Minions running forward on the stun, Urshaker's on the way, he can get himself a double fissure, able to do so, no real totem stun to follow up, they'll have to get rid of the Skeleton Minions, Seb's able to do it, Raid Fire Blast from Chalice, he'd like to throw out another one and get these Raid King Skeletons to focus onto the Nature's Prophet, that's why he cuts through the tree lines, and Jirax, a perfect body block, a sprout for extra defense, and Nature's Prophet just to TP out, and Jirax taking it for the squad. Oh, that was... Oh, that is really not good from Seb, though. He, he canceled the out. TP. Yeah, he, he, he got scared that they were going to kill him if he completed that TP, but that's a big loss for him. Ame's going ham on top lane, but Notel, here comes your tether forward, so Notel will die. And it can get the kill, but then FY, he's still got a couple of sprites left over. As well as some stick charges, yeah, Anna's going to be okay. But no, no plus two for the silencer. That's a good trade still for OG, getting the kill on them, uh, more flank, getting the gyro kill. It's very big. They need... This top lane, I think, is the... It just didn't go as well as OG would have liked early on, so they're a bit in recovery mode on that top lane, so getting the kill for Morph is very important. Now, I'm, I've been very impressed with how LGD managed to play that 2-on-3 lane, by the way. They really played on the edge and... Uh, took advantage of the small mistakes, like the little things OG do wrong in the lane, they punished really hard. And I'm, I'm, I'm still saying that, but I'm still curious though if, if they're if they're punished hard enough. Like they have the number one net worth, but we know that OG's lineup works really well against LGDs. So they're ahead for now, but the Invoker, like face boots are on the way in just oh, a bit. Topson, Topson, Topson. This yeah, is... he's he's worried, but they I think they already saw the movement of X Nova before. He's dead if he gets stunned. He's got to be really careful here. Well, he's hit six. He's got Tornado EMP. Somnus and Exanova run forward. There's your stun available. Thompson and they scythe them down. Somnus was dropping so low. Seb will arrive too. Thought about the sprout, but into that ghost shroud. He just hides it up. Still got 10 stick charges available. And Somnus will be able to retreat back out again. Meanwhile, the gyrocopter did go down. And the IO. And the IO. That's so the... They lost both on the safe lane. Wrath of Nature reveal. It's so strong when you're playing these uh, these lanes. I think Wrath of Nature... Oh, scan! Jirax! Oh, he misses the stun! The Observer Ward! He saw Rex Nova for just a little bit of a line. Now the stun will be available. Somnus, he's got a turn for the Fissure, and he cannot do it in time. FY just TPs in, brings the extra damage. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Charles is doing what Wraith Kings do best when they get high levels up in the Mortal Strike. It's, uh, goodbye tier 1 tower. Yep. Well, these TPs. Thompson, EMP, Tornado, Burn, combining up with a Call Snap. Jirax has the follow-up control. Fissure available too, and he body blocks out Chalice. Now he can Fissure block him as well, holding in Chalice. And Thompson, he turned around to actually farm up the creeps. They didn't find the extra damage. You will lose top lane as Io locked in, silenced up. Seb came in to join him, join him this fight as more plus twos. Raking is still on the run. Rotation's coming in from Somna, so maybe a missed opportunity down on bottom lane for OG, but they still capitalize on top. Nice detail from Somnus there when he walked up the high ground. He made sure to pretend he didn't see Jarex. He saw him the whole time, but he walked up and then he like sidestepped like he was, uh, oh, there's Shaker. So he didn't give away his ward. Very nice. Ame's in trouble. Another curse coming in. X Nova's going to arrive. Misses the stun onto Nortel. Who is able to get the curse over onto Line and thanks to the sprout from Seb. Nortel's got more distance. Ame turns on the flak and Charles has joined the fight as well. X Nova will go down. They want to be able to TP out this one. Nortel, he's starting it off. Anna now waits it out. He wanted to wait and be the attention creator to allow the rest of his team to get back out. Yep, they do full disengage. Still, this is a, it's very interesting to look at the levels of this game, actually, when you look across these heroes. There's the off laners, which are, in this game, the safe laners are high level, and the mid laners, but the carries are both level 5, minute 9. 
uh, from this early chaotic laning stage. And for OG, it makes sense, right? They started as three for quite a while, but the amount of pressure they managed to put on the gyro has still limited Ame enough that he's also only sitting on that five. They're gonna have a crack towards mid. Tornado EMP, they need to keep these chain stuns going onto the Necro, so there's no mana to work with. A follow-up fissure, but Necro, that Ghost Round plus stick charges, the hit won't miss uphill. And once again, no tell us the RNG with him. And LGD has the entire team with him, practically. I is the only one who's not here. Now connect onto the uh, missile. Onto Jirax, another quick curse. Jirax, he's got a little life to work with. Looks for the follow-up stun, keeping Gyrocopter in the fog of war. He'll lose no tail. It's a bit of a spree to take. But the ES will survive. In the meantime, it's a lot of space for Ana. He's getting the top tier 1 tower. I think this exchange for OG, getting the necro kill for this, is worth it if they don't lose their mid tier 1 now. They're gonna try to TP in a defend. Oh, this... Oh, that's actually um, fine. Curse of the Chalice, maybe not so fine. That may almost be enough to pop his ankh. One charge just now, keeps him up. Fisher didn't connect in time, X Nova dies. Back behind the tier 1 tower. No-Tail has been really involved, by the way. We haven't looked at this yet, but he has stolen 18 Intelligence, minute 10. Yeah. He's been in the AoE for 9 of their kills. Oh, excellent. Interesting fight, top. Yeah, Somnus versus Morphling itself. <laughs> it's the same versus the same. Here comes your curse. No-Tail again. He's got that last word available in half a second, and he's using it onto X Novus. They can guarantee the kill onto the Lion. The Scythe, it doesn't do enough work. Necro's gonna fall as well. Plus 22 for the Silencer. That's one smart blade thrower. Not to mention, they now see a very nice stack to farm too. Shame there's no gyrocopter to steal flat cannon from. Uh, this is a uh, this is a very different game from the last one, and it seems that what have, what has really stifled uh, LGD in this game is just how slowly Ame has come online. The gyrocopter has not been that much of a factor yet. Yep. Now he's level six, closing in on level seven. So we'll see if they can find openings in this game to to pull it back. I think the hero you want to play around is this Wraith King Blink Dagger. I, that's what LGD are waiting for, and then they're going to try to strike. Lane, nice Fissure. Perfect Fissure block from Jirax. Charles thought he had a small opening to get back out, but now Global Silence is up. Lion can do nothing to help the Wraith King, so his reincarnation will pop. Ayo, is he going to bring in extra help? Yep, the relocate. It should be coming in just behind the lines. And Thompson, he saw it. He got the tornado off onto FY as well as Army, but it's still not enough. That flat cannon damage. He doesn't have a cooldown. It was on cooldown for an extra two seconds. The Fissure stun is available. FY will pull him out in one second's time, and it's just not enough. Bam! Barely, barely killing off the gyrocopter, and now X Nova revealed by the Triants. He, uh, he'll be able to escape. They want the bigger ones. They want a Chalice, but a tower denied from Topson. I think that's actually the, se the second tier one tower to fall, and both have been denied by OG. Oh, got him! Oh, I can tell you from experience that feels so good. <laughs> that is the best. Just getting a fog finger of oh, death kill on a carry. coming over. It's a good curse, but Thompson, has he got the movement speed to get out of this one? He does not. FY, low on life, no talent with another plus two. Oh 26 intelligence stolen. X Nova, Seb couldn't trap him in. Jirax's fissure won't be able to arrive in time either, so instead they can look towards the Wraith King. They know his reincarnation is down for so long. There's your fissure, create some space, lock him in with a sprout, and no tell on 10 HP will get the kill onto Chalice. A big spree to end, and they're just tipping him. He's, it's not like he's got enough. 28 stolen intelligence now. He has so much mana to work with. I wonder if they... If they're gonna try to give no tail items in this game in some way or not, because they need the mm -hmm. shaker is not the kind of hero where like you know what, don't worry man, I'll play five this game with a soul ring minute thirty. He has to get a dagger eventually, so they can't yep. really pass no tail over into a true four. But just look at how strong he could be with this extra twenty eight int. It's, no, no it really no matters. He could make a silencer like like silencer has all these DPS talents. He can run him as a call with the attack speed, um, the attack range, and then having the glaive of wisdom with his uh, change up with Agatha. Let's not, not get ahead of ourselves. Is I, he really going to get level twenty five this game, Toby? I don't know. So. <laughs> well, this game may go on for a while. LGD can defend the high ground pretty well. So if OG silencer support like never gets twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> almost never at least. But it could happen. You can just Close. think of the dream. A three-man smoke up. It was out of range of any LGD Observer Ward, and they're looking to wrap around the back. They already had their own deeper obs down. As FY looks like he's going to be target number one. Thompson rotates up. Tornado EMP. Jirax into range for the fidget control, and no tell, plus 30. Just watch that counter. Tick, 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 boom. And we got a mid tower at the same time. I like this play from OG a lot. It's one of those plays that can backfire, where you 
You show presence in mid with two of your cores and you're hitting the tower and the enemy team's like, oh, they're protected by the supports. But the supports are off making another move. But what if LGD had jumped the mid while they yep. were doing that? That could have turned out pretty bad for them, but they play, they play aggressively, they pose aggressively, and they get the job done. Kill and tower at no cost. That's a lot of vision in range of each other. Two observer wards near the Ancients. Yeah, that's... They, I, I don't like this warding. I don't they, think it's that good. I think they did it because, uh, like, Don't Tell was pinging out Roshan, so it was it was priority number one, but they needed to push the top lane back before they could go in for Roshan. And yeah. maybe they also feel like LGD are nowhere near strong enough to actually contest them. It's like, if you look at the way these wards are placed, right, the ward in the middle of the three is probably not necessary, right? You could place that closer to the pit where Jarek's just pinged. If you have it on the yeah. lower ground there and you break smoke, you have some good info. Yeah, now it's, Jarek, it's okay. Now Jarek has to stand there. But no one's coming for them and they've got the sustain. That's an early mech on the Nature's Prophet. Mech? Yeah, he's he's going real classico here. Uh, excuse me, what year is it? <laughs> that is actually such a... That's a retro build. Seb's a hipster. Yeah. You know he always wants to have like something like but it's <laughs> So this mech, I'm still not feeling that they can push into LGD. Like not I yet. don't I still don't think they can take high ground with it, right? Or is it meant to be just enough they can keep the creep wave alive they can go in? Um because you got death pulse, you got skeleton minions, you got flat cannon. I just think that the call the call for the team is the way we're gonna itemize Fury on this game is we're gonna use him as an aura bot. So he's gonna get mech crimson and pipe. Maybe pipe, we'll see. But okay. Looks like Crimson is the choice for now against the Gyrocopter. Obviously a great item against that hero. They're looking um, to defend bottom. But yeah. I personally I think I would have liked to see the Crimson first more, actually. I don't blame him for going mech. Uh, the item isn't that great right now compared to what it has been, but it can still be good sometimes. It's when more... when Ames had such a bad start, like I, I can blame him. Oh, uh, oh, no. they actually got this done. That tornado. It's a long range one. Chalice will blink, but he doesn't get down the ramp. But there's no observer ward to really see anything to play from there. And okay, I need to. What you doing? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the rebind. Doesn't let you use F1 as that, but I'm a stubborn mule. <laughs> and I like my F1 for all, for all fog vision. Alright, so they may de ward one of the obs, or maybe that was another part of the shady plan. Oh, they got one of our obs. They would not would never have committed two to this area. Wait, which which one did they get? They haven't got it yet. They, oh, they I put see. the sentry yeah, yeah. on the low ground. I see it, I see it. But uh, that's a nice stack to, to farm up. Alacrity buff up as well onto a Morphling. Yeah, OG are gonna take the stack and then they're gonna go top tier two. It's it's so weird looking at a level nine morphling minute seventeen. It's, the the levels of this game are interesting. It doesn't feel natural, right? It's a level twelve necro. He's he's number one on the field. First item you also, I like this a lot. He needs uh he needs a way of solving the the EMP problem. And he is planning to just dodge it simply with this Yules. And it's also good against silencer obviously, so he, it's like a multi-purpose item, this game. Both of those spells are great to avoid. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if going Yule's Blink is going to work, though. I think he has a lot of weight on his shoulders to do damage in the fights and be a threat. And if, right now, he doesn't threaten that much, except from Reaper. Like, if Jurex continues to get the space he's getting up on top lane, you get that Blink Echo Slam, there is no response from Necro. Like, the Yule Scepter won't be able yeah. to save him. So when you think of, um, like, Aeon Disc or something, like, some, some level of protection to the burst bomb. He'll need that later, but I I don't know. It's it's tricky, right? Because you picked this Necrophos early in the draft, and it's been countered a lot. It's like, what do you even buy? Like, what do you buy so you feel good in this game? Yeah. The Yules is definitely a good purchase, but what's your next item? What feels that nice to buy? I don't, I don't, you need I don't a way know. to stop... <laughs> you need to stop EMP burn, too. I guess he doesn't have enough to continuously... Uh, I think, I think like what he's going for, what he's going for is he will walk into the fight, make people cast spells, stay alive, yours, and then blink out. I think that's what he wants the dagger for. Is he, okay. ne he needs to reset his position or he will die when he comes down from yours. It's not enough to, to protect him. Especially when this Morphling gets big later, you would imagine he wants to go for uh, perhaps an E-Blade later. They almost got the Asher on the Courier. Oh. They fortify it up, and they uh, they had no kill potential available. But this does reveal OG's uh, LGD's position. The fact that we're trying to flank around, looking for their own fight. He doesn't want to go E blade at all on the morph. Actually, he's going full on combat build. Yasha into BKB. E blade is really good against Necro, but mm -hmm. he's probably looking at, looking at the bigger picture. He wants to hit as hard as possible when he steals flat cannon. That's that's got to be the idea here. But do you just keep it as a casual Yasha? Like, it's... Yeah, it's still a really good item, I think. Mm -hmm. It did get nerfed, but it costs more and the Manta is cheaper. 
but it's, <laughs> it's a valuable item. I like how they keep looking for the fight up on top lane, and then Topson's Forged Spirit drags the mid lane over. Like, I was thinking that Nature's Prophet would be the real pain in the butt when it comes to, to the laning phase for LGD, but Thompson's making the real, like, real use of the Forge Spirits. Yep. And it means it frees up uh, Seb, like, he just shoves the middle lane even harder, they could look for another tower. And LGD, the one big thing they've got going for them in, is this bottom lane. The fact that the tier 1 tower is still up and standing. This... he just went Shadow Blade on the Nature's Prophet now. Wait, what? Okay, now I don't know what's going on anymore. He he had Glimmer Cape lined up originally. All right, well, he's able to at least walk up to the Wraith King. Uh, he's beyond it. that, he needs to wait a little bit longer. Here comes your Sprout. Girax comes in through the side. Stun will not be able to connect. Fissure is available, and they just wave form. They want this Wraith King dead. So that's number one. They'll need a second attempt. Perfect timing on the Enchant. Very nice. And they've got him. Plus two. Pina Wilson have said that for no tell. 32 intelligence stolen. We've got some dumb people on LGD right now. Oh, Topson is visible. Yep. FY dropped the sentry. So, I guess... <laughs> obviously, <laughs> what you use Shadowblade for in Nature's Prophet is setting up ganks. I just... It really didn't look like that was their game plan when they bought the mech. It's, a, it's like... You know, sometimes you have a little... You have a bit of both worlds, and it's worse sometimes than just having one thing you're really strong at, right? Like, he's, he's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, but a master of none right now, and you've got to... You gotta, you gotta wonder, wait, that's that, he's going Hex now? Okay, so he's really, he's really <laughs> itemizing into the catch now. Yeah. I mean, I, c I can be down with that. I just feel like, like, maybe the mech wasn't worth it then. Yeah. If that's what he's going to. Maybe they just, uh... They, they changed their minds, I think. They maybe, changed their minds. Maybe it could also just be that safety thing. Like, I want to ensure that we're going to have a really good team fight, no matter what happens, or that we get a, a really strong push. Mech is able to do that for you. And then you realize that there's no point itemizing any harder into it because you still need to now kill off LGD if you want to go high ground. You, you need the gank ability. So they find the second obs, they didn't. So Xnova de-warded the Observe Ward that was on the hillside. And then he thought, oh yeah, so it's not here anymore. And they put the Observe Ward to the east. So they put down three sentry oh, wards and all around the ops, and he's just walked underneath one of them. Global silence. Looks like it's helping Thompson to escape, but more importantly, it's Army as well as FY teaming up together to get the kill into Chirax. Let the split shots fly, but now Anna waveforms up. Arme runs down. Chalice can't fight, actually does hit, but not strong enough. Arme is going to fall. Chalice into the tree lines 12 seconds before the Anx back off cooldown, and he just jukes it perfectly. Blinks up and away. Seb got Reapered. In the meantime, that's a big kill for Somnus, but overall, great sequence from OG here. Uh, I thought that was perhaps going to be a bad fight for them with Shaker dying and not even getting spells off. Uh, the BKB Gyro caught them by surprise, I think. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, we see it here. The Gyro has isolated him here. They've used Global. They will get the Shaker kill, but this Black Cannon is owning. Yep. It kills the Wisp in the back line up to the top right. Waveform doesn't connect, doesn't matter. They eventually chase down this Gyro. And if Seb doesn't die to the Reaper there, it's a really big win. It's still it's still a solid win for uh, for OG in that fight. Oh, we come back live. It's a little bit too late. Tornado does grab the Wraith King, but Topson... Wait, a fraction of a second too long. No tell's gonna sentry just in case they had the vision, but they did, but it was a long time before. It was the Observe Ward next to the Tier 1 tower on top lane. That sees everything. Seb? Curious Knight. Mm, mm. Rest for everyone that saw it. Oh, oh that's done. <laughs> X Nova came quick for a man who's only got tranquil boots and a stick. He he doesn't even have fourteen hundred net worth. That was close, but probably worth it. Oh, observer, what's going to be dewarded? That's oh. a quick and easy one. EMP tornado going to miss Chalice, who once again is very quick on the blink. They still haven't found the word. <laughs> The sentries are just outside range, both of them. Yeah. There was uh, three of them. Oh, Seb bought him. He already used a Shadow Blade. He is toast. Trigger the mech, give some armor, and uh, still die. Oh. You got OG still hunting with the rest of the team. Like, this isn't the first time we've seen OG just, like, lose a hero. They do this 4-1 split, but normally it's, uh, it's Ana they're buying more and more space for to get bigger and bigger. Yep. But Anna's the man on the front lines while Seb's doing the back. Anna is definitely very farmed. 
He keeps accelerating because of his build-up with the, the Dragon Lance Yasha. He transitioned into oh, Elixir, and now BKB's on the menu next. He's just fissuring to try and get the jump away. Charles able to connect on the stun. Somnus is on his way over, has a blink of his own. Global Silence, Anna jumps him through the rear. He comes in as the Morphling to find his own stun, but they've already lost the ES, and now Anna very much stranded. Finger of death, and now the Scythe. It was denied before by the Global Silence, but it will not be denied this time. 77 seconds. Seconds, the Morphling's gonna be dead and Roshan spawns in 50. That's such a big moment for LGD. And what sets all of this up is that Invoker's on the opposite side of the map. This time, OG are not together. And without Topson's control, even though they get the global off, like they, they can't chain the global with anything. They tried to save Jarex from the Reaper, which they actually did. And because they saved him from the Reaper, the Morphling died to Reaper. <laughs> so the global might have actually been counterproductive in that situation, but you get why they're doing it. It's just, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a hard one to, to call out. It's like, well, you know, yeah, it's like, it's like it struck Disrupt a glimpse. I think this is a really good idea. Wait, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, that's a big loss, though. The kill on Ana is really big. If they got the Shaker, you know, it's passable, but that, mm -hmm. that Morphling kill is a, a three or 4,000 gold swing, actually, what just happened. That is super big. Yeah. The experience swing too, like that's that's now LGD having a commanding lead for the first time this game. Yep. And Thompson's just having to wait in the tree lines. They may look for a fight once he reveals himself with a tornado, that could do it. TP scroll is available and now he's starting it off as Somnus blinks forward, doesn't find the target, he's still in the trees. But OG is just finding their, their space now. It's 150 gold before Thompson's got his Aghanim Scepter. No Talos building in towards the Glimmer Cape. Seb is okay. Like he's a mystic staff worth of money away from having his scythe, and you got the Manda style from Anna. He's an ultimate orb away from this. Oh, I. He changed his mind, huh? Yeah, I thought he's, he was he's gonna going back to the Manta. It looked like he was going Yasha BKB. Then he went Yasha Lincoln's. Then he was going Lincoln's BKB, and I was going Lincoln's Manta. He's changing his mind a lot, and. You think about what he dodges there. Like it's, 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 it's just so like Wraithfire Blast doesn't connect. It's it's such a good BKB game. He will get it. It's just I don't I don't know if this is the right order of buying these items. I think OG are missing a timing by not having a BKB on Morph right now. Because I think if they have a BKB on Morph and they get the jump, the Morph is going to kill everyone. What's Unless the timing game? is to just delay this game even more and more. Like, and you almost split push with the man to style up a lane. I, I guess they could do that, but it's it's not out of the question they have really good split push lineup they have nature's prophet invoker and morph so it's yeah. definitely playable that way it's just they're doing split push into relocate it's always dangerous yeah. like you and, gotta be really careful like do they even win this game late game like to just push this into split push like eventually that like, is very debatable like 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 who caps out when when there's reaper's scythe on the field i always i always worry yeah i i really like both lineups late game i don't think <laughs> I don't necessarily think OG need to worry about going late. It's just they had the they had the they had this game under control and yep. they they lost it in the last few minutes. So, well, tier one tower on the top lane is finally being pushed in from LGD. And Vision do it previously. There's a blink into the tree. So Jirax level two Echo Slam ready to roll. Very dangerous thing for LGD when they have a large amount of skeleton minions are pushing the lane. At uh, LGD feel it and they're gonna back up. They didn't de-ward the sentry walk because they didn't want to reveal their position. And uh, OG... Now they have no issue about doing that. And again, they look towards Roshan. He is up. This is Aegis and Cheese. So, critical one for OG to claim if they want to ensure the next team fight belongs to them. So they go into the pit. But LGD are very aware of what's going on. Is that Observer what they have on the Radiant Hill side? They shouldn't have it for long yet. Now they, now they see it, but the jump comes in. It's on the Silence of the Scythe will kill him off. No tell has buyback available. And he pops the Global Silence while Jarakub's already popped the BKB. Seb can't complete his TP out. Anna wants to try and buy a little bit of space. He can at least kill off FY, then goes into being the Raid King as Morphling. More buybacks coming in from OG. And they're looking for it. They've got the trap onto Arme. The Sprout is down the waveform forward. Gyrocopter is down. Chalice jumps in. Still with the reaction of Balboa. It's Thompson who's the one who's being locked down. Somnus, the call snap is onto him. So Thompson get a little bit more space and battle against Chalice. Tornado doesn't catch Somnus as well. But they can isolate the Raid King. The reaction will pop once more as Nortel and Anna. They chase down Somnus. And Chalice can just blink away. But Prophet TP's over. They're waiting for the Fissure for the right time. He's silenced up. Here comes the Fissure. Oh. Pushes him out of the Sprout. That was not the right time, but a kill is a kill. They still claim him. Raid King down for 50 seconds without any buyback. OG can claim Roshan. There was a cost, but it's going to belong to them.
And what was very, very important in this situation is that the Reaper gets used on the Silencer in the opening. That's actually, that's the one piece that LGD are missing when this fight goes long, is that they don't have the Reaper for a core, they can't Reaper Thompson, they can't Reaper Ana, and OG know it. They're just playing off the fact that Necro doesn't have ulti. It's like, if No-Tail doesn't have buyback in this situation, LGD win that fight, probably. But since he does, you know, his next death time will be really long. Yep. <laughs> but until then, this is definitely, it's good for them. And it... In a way, you could say it's a little bit fortunate, right? Like, they actually, they managed to stand under a ward and yep. give LGD the opportunity, but the one jump they could find was not the one that they needed. Yep. The, the Reaper on Silencer, if they could have killed him without Reapering, that could have been really good for them. Yeah. Instead, RG pulls the Homer to succeed without even really trying. LGD, of course they're trying. <laughs> But, uh, so Seb, Anna, like, they're, they're trying to remove this last out of tower. Still pushing high ground is an absolute nightmare. Like, Ame went through that entire fight. I think he got his flat cannon charges off, but he never had the suns as well. And I don't believe he even got the call down off. There goes the tier 2 tower on bottom lane. Where are you going? <laughs> it's still, net worth-wise, it's a close game, but... Yeah. It just, it doesn't, oh, this is a really big item, actually, the BKB. The BKB, Nick, son. Yeah. It's, it, it just feels like OG are in more control than 2K, you know? Like, when you look yeah. at the map, they're... It's like, it's, it's, it's OG's fight to find. Like, they push in the bottom lane, they burn off all the mana of Chalice. He has no reincarnation in this phase, but that's the reason why you got one charges as well as FY to bring him back up. The fortifications use the tier 3 tower to bring this down, such a huge thing for OG, because then they can start claiming shrines. But they don't need to force it. They can wait it up. They still have Aegis, they still have Cheese. And they've still got all, like, pretty much map control, thanks to the movement of Seb. And he's looking for Rex Nova in the trees. Have they got extra help? Well, who's I for who? Yeah, relocate. Global Silence! It cancels him! Io can't complete it! And now it's nice at X Nova doing his own TP out. He'll be successful. But Global Silence, we kind of got to remember the new IO. Yep. And because they don't get that, get that kill, Seb now has enough money to finish up his scythe. They could have delayed that item for a little bit longer. That is a really big part of the Silencer counterpick to IO when we saw it in the draft. That is extremely useful. Being able to just cancel out relocates with it. It's mm -hmm. the new disruptor, if you will, for that reason. <laughs> Yeah we're, looking, nice solution. yeah, we're looking for the counter. You do still want to have it for team fights. Uh, Anna. Oh, he got the flag. The gyrocopter and then lets it rip. Ame has to go into that BKB. X Nova cannot stand close by. He lets off the stun as well as the Hex. It can stop a lot of the damage, but now Reaper's side flies forward. Thompson just tanks through it. Deathling Blast pushing back the gyrocopter as Wraith King is the one who's isolated. There's the Solon homing missile who's, who's going towards him at the moment. He'll be fine. Yeah, they tried to Reaper burst Thompson, but the mech came in. I think the connecting damage from LGD just wasn't in range either. They didn't get a finger off yep. before that uh, the Reaper snapped. So this is big. No BKB on Gyro. And OG they're pushing, have refilled. They're pushing all lanes. Like Seb's taking this tier 3 tower on bottom lane with no contest. Charles wants to blink in, but you've cut Invis. He dusted it too late. He mistimed yep. it. And the mid lane. Tier 3 tower will be lost there. Somnus with a quick aggressive blink forward. And you'll be alive with Death Pulse. Homing Missile, easy money. And now they can take the Shrines. Anna looks like such a beast too when they give him Alacrity. Oh, you give him Alacrity, he's got the Aegis so he's like the Black Cannon? That's pretty stupid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and that becomes Necro for healing. He's, he's still not going BKB now. I kind of like in this situation not going BKB now because he has an Aegis and they're in this good position so they can try to play around the Aegis. At the same time though, if they don't get immediate value out of this Aegis, he's still playing with a risk of getting locked down and killed. There's so many targeted instant stuns or fast stuns. Wraith King stun, Lion Hex, Mono Drain to take off the Lincolns, Impale. Even in the middle of these chaotic fights, a homing missile can actually be super annoying. So you gotta be you gotta be on your toes. That's more fling without BKB. What do you think about uh, the slammer shaker? Uh, we're getting an Agadim scepter build from Jurax. Yeah, I think this item is is really good now. Actually, it's actually changed because normally it was like that. Uh, yeah, the ju the jump is better. I think it's I don't remember the exact change, uh, but I think you jump faster. 
That's that's what and comes to mind. Uh, cast range increase from 900 to 1100 was the last one. Yeah, I think there was one before that too with cast, like, just the jump speed or something. I personally have not purchased Axe on this hero for two years, so... <laughs> but I've seen other players use it. Oh, Anna. Nice done, run away. Homing missile still behind him. Chalice wants to go for the fight. Aegis Immortal, it does time out. Yeah. Well, now that's a risk. And that's why LGD were looking for that fight in the first place. They want to hit that perfect moment to kill him off, but now Thompson, Jirax, does actually get the stun onto the Gyrocopter. But they don't really have the right line for it as Wraith King BKBs dodges the Wraith Fire Blast coming out from Anna, but Charles is BKB. It's the 10 second duration one that he's popped and he hasn't really found anyone. In fact, they kited him out and then they look towards FY instead who has to tether himself down to the bottom lane to defend against the push onto the Rack Stun Strike. Well, we haven't heard of one of those and the Echo Slam! Jirax arrives with a three man hit! Hits it absolutely perfectly, but then the Ford Global Silence Army, he's going in real, real deep. They have that first kill. It's over onto Seth. No buyback available for him. The Scythe comes down to onto Thompson. He'll get the cheese off the Scythe. He'll not find the kill. And now Raid King, another follow-up stun. Waveform forward. They'll break the ank on him, but the Hex onto Anna in the back lines. Really, really problematic. They'll be able to isolate him up. He's got no escape really to work with. Waveform in one second, but one second is too long. Thompson now has to just run himself out. No town was able to TP away to safety, but <laughs> LGD just have the greatest fight. <laughs> oh, there's some, there's some beautiful irony in that. Like, gets the Echo Slam, they jump in, they drop the chat wheel lines, and they just <laughs> lose the fight orb. <laughs> oh, God. You know, let's concentrate a little bit more on playing your heroes instead of dropping the chat lines. Who knows what happens? Uh, I, I think OG were just feeling really good about that fight, and they got outplayed. Like, they... It looked like a good echo and a good follow-up from the Furion. However, Furion did get killed. They got a Reaper off. Like you said, they did cheese it with Thompson, so he stayed alive. But it's just uh, LGD were were in control after the first five to ten seconds of that fight. If they survive that echo and the global, mm -hmm. and OG don't find kills in it, well, what do they do against this Wraith King who just jumps at them? What do they do about the Gyro who has the backup of the IO? They didn't have the damage, and now. Guess what Morphling's doing, Toby? He's, <laughs> he's like, all right. Or maybe I should it get a It turns out I need it anyway. And yeah, but he's he's a long way away. Like uh, I say, like like well, he was a long way away. He's actually 3.5k. Yeah, never mind. He's actually perfectly right for a BKB timing. Plus 35 alacrity damage. So we're gonna speed. see. We're gonna see it here. So here's the Echo Slam. Invoker's a little bit far behind, actually, but he, he doesn't seem to have the right spells ready, so they do get the Echo, but there's no direct follow-up to prevent the BKB from Jara from going off. He chases down the Shaker. This Reaper does not give him the kill, but you look over the Dire side, they're relatively healthy, right? Like, the IO is half HP, Wraith King still has ulti ready. We get to come back alive. LGD were coming for an invasion, but Anna was there to find him, so the Jara comes to dice very early on. There's a space-creating Tornado, which actually clips onto the IO. Charles will begin his BKB. The damage output is high enough to break him. FY completes his TP out. Charles will not be so lucky. A quick mech, no follow-up damage. No tile could survive. Plus 40 now for the silencer. A regeneration rune if somebody wants that. I think Anna will be very happy to claim it. And, and two heroes down where they want to force a buyback and no Echo Slam used from Jira And no Global. They have both spells still. Oh boy. And now Blink 4 could have actually done it instantly onto X Nova, but it does not come as a Fissure instead. They have no vision inside the base, nor any defensive sentry wards up from LGD. Here comes Ana with Alacrity. All yep. right. And one buyback. They'd like to have the second onto the Gyrocopter and then probably the fallback. Remember, they do not have the Aegis the Immortal anymore. Echo Slam, GRS goes again, and then the jump up and away to absolutely nowhere. He'll be signed down for all of his good deeds, and maybe this is enough space. The buyback's already fully out from LGD, and there's full retreat now from OG. Maybe not enough when Invoker, you'll set it up. Thompson gets hit by the missile. He's got no way to escape out. Two heroes from OG down. They're both dead for a very long period of time. Waveform away. Morphling will be out dodge that Wraith Fire Blast. But now LGD, they're hoping Roshan's going to be up, but they're going to wait a minute and a half for it to happen. Meanwhile, they did lose their bottom range racks while the fight was going on. Well, they actually don't have buybacks on OG here. This is yeah. really dangerous. That's why you're seeing Seb already on the bottom lane. He's way, looking to get that push in to get a counter racks, yeah, bring he, him back home. Yeah, if they do have relocate, though, it's it's tricky to to get this done with here and against this specific hero. We'll see if... If he can force enough of a rotation that LGD don't just go high ground here, but they might timing, be worried right? about the buyback. Like, if LGD go high ground, like, they also have to consider Roshan. 
So they burn the fortification, they try and delay it up. You've got the long range curses. Chalice jumps in. Reincarnation's available. The damage from Anna's pretty damn good, however. And now in trouble. The scythe! Anna! You'll go down, no buyback! Anna is actually down for the count. Sam is pushing in the bottom lane, so they're looking for a counter Rax. Lion's already coming back over. Watch the IOTP or relocate. They're not bringing everyone back. It's just Arme and X Nova. And they haven't done the mid racks. Chalice is still here, but Seb, he comes in from the bottom lane. FY is available, but he doesn't have the mana to actually really get him out. So Chalice will BKB up. Seb will do the same type of thing, turning to hit back into the Raid King. Sprout's available, and he does it on the ground. He couldn't do it on Tiger, thanks to BKB. And Chalice is, he's just surviving that tornado. That's a wide ball. FY, he's getting the mana up and running, and he won't require it. Chalice able to blink away. The Fissure able to connect. Topson's on the hunt. Goes walking forward, finds a better target over towards the Necro. Now BKB is up, protecting him. All these immunities not available as Jirax, the Leaping Earthshaker forward, gets the extra information. FY comes back here to help out, but Jirax jumping forward again with the totem. A double fissure. The control is perfect from OG. Seb with the double kill. They want more. Somnus and Ame, they're just coming in one by one. They feed themselves over to OG. And one by one, they continuously pop their BKBs. Relocate. Iris coming back to the front lines. They want the manpower. They want to keep this fight going. And with the size, they bring down Invoker. 130 seconds on the sideline. More seconds in a Fnatic Minute game. No Tell's on the run. A quick TP out by Prophet. He knows he needs to keep the sidelines going. No Tell, Glimmer Cape, Kenny Duke it. Where's the vision? Follow the hand. That's one way to do it. He'll pick up a regeneration rune. Keep the run going. Turns for a quick curse. He's got a little bit more life, but he doesn't have enough to survive this. But it's enough to delay LGD. They do not claim mid racks. And they cannot capitalize after it. That was so... I, uh, who won that fight? I don't even know. I just, hang on, let me just check how many buybacks was that. It was like a 15 buybacks. That one, two, three, four. So you got four, you got four out from LGD, and the buybacks are already back off cooldown from OG. So OG have not used any buybacks in this situation. They do buy the time, but it's still... They still had to pay a couple of really key kills, so the buybacks from LGD kind of paid for themselves in this. It's like, you imagine, we look at this and we're like, what just happened? Imagine playing in this situation, like, how do you grasp what just happened? How do you feel like, did we win or lose that fight? Like, you you just yeah. play on, you know? You're like, okay, let's focus on the next objective, which is definitely Roshan here for OG. By the way, uh, we didn't talk about this earlier. Ana took the Morph Target's Allies taunt. He used it on Invoker earlier to have two Alacrities. And just now, I think he had it on Shaker, which is really, really useful. Being able to get that second Fissure, but of course, his primary target will be Gyro for the Flak. However, Jaro has Lincolns, so... Yeah. He's got, he's got the protection. He can't get it. And now he's going to go in for a Satanic. All the extra life. I mean, hey, if he wants to, Rapier is also on the field, but I don't think they can survive long enough for it. Trees from Seb. Watching Roshan, so as LGD go in, a lot of information. It's a dangerous thing when you have Jirax in the neighborhood, but they have to get rid of the Observe Ward. The stolen gem that Jirax picked up before, he can just jump up there. Thanks to that Aghanim Scepter. Roshan solo. They need that bling forward. A jump in. Roshan's low. The Fissure, Agus, Immortal Cheese, and Refresh Shot all on the ground and all collected up by LGD. OG did not go for the jump. They have to rely totally on these side lanes, delaying the timing now for LGD. The bottom lane's already on its way in. LGD must come home. And LGD are in the driver's seat now, though. Once they get these lanes pushed out, having this oh. huge advantage of Aegis, Cheese, and Refresher. They got double Scythe as well on Necro, because he, got, he got the Refresher shot. He could get Dagon 5. He could also save for buyback. He's working on this buyback, as it looks for now. It's, it's a dangerous territory we're into now, because LGD has this life advantage from the Aegis and Cheese, but they don't have buybacks. So this next fight, if it goes poorly for LGD, they just lose the game. If it goes well, it's a matter of how many buybacks does OG actually have to fight with. They don't have one on Morphling, the Furion has his, the Invoker does not have his. OG yep. are actually just... Everyone's a little short, but they're only short. Yeah. They're, they're only short by about 700, 800 gold. So if they can get something out of that fight, Chalice the Prophet TPing in. They get the Lincoln Spear trigger off. They want to kill off Chalice as quick as they possibly can. So then they can kill him off again. Alacrity puff ups. In they come onto the Morphling. He hits like an absolute truck. About 400. And the stun from Jirax could not have timed it any better. The Scythe will be in the back line, but it's on the Silencer. He can just buy back, get the Global Silence off, allowing Seb to beat the crap out of Lion. Not so much, however. 30 HP X Nova will survive, and the rest of OG have TP'd away. Without their Morphling available, they just cannot take this fight anymore. LGD are doing a really good job at catching Morphling out. He didn't get BKB off in this situation. Ana has to be really, really cautious because if Lion 
If Lion gets Blink Monitor and Hex on him, he just dies. They <laughs> actually just take him out from full HP with all of the bursts that they have. And They're we're going to see mid. the replay here. That More way. playing. He waveforms away. Actually, we might have to go back to live here. LGD, BKB pop from Gyrocopter. Yeah, actually, yeah, in, in our live world, they're pushing in onto the mid ranks. Not too much happening here. Yep, so here we are, Another. back into the line, back, jump, jump into the back lines, onto Somnus, Seth doing the work, GRX gets the stun, the follow-up, they kill off the Reaper before he can actually get the scythe off, before he get anything off, and Aya will probably join him, the Sun Strikes run, the money, FY will pop, and that's so many heroes down for LGD, a quick mag, extra life, fight me if you dare, globally throws it out, LGD, three heroes down, and it seems like an eternity, their death timers. Yeah, if OG don't screw up here, this should actually just flat out be the end of the game. This was a dangerous thing for LGD. Sure, you've got this Refresher Shard, she's an Aegis, but if you take one bad fight, none of your cores have buybacks. Mm -hmm. They ran down mid and tried to fight this with their Wraith King dead. Sure, Morphling is dead too, but it's OG's base, it's on OG's terms, and they could have however many buybacks. You don't know. Like, LGD doesn't have the information. I actually cannot believe, too, the fact that Seb got that jump into the back lines he doesn't even like he came in with a silver edge he didn't even come in with a blink and was able to catch out uh catch out the reaper oh did you see what seb just did what? he tp'd home to let morph morph into him to <laughs> tp with him now they both have global teleport okay <laughs> And so one way to get him to the front lines, and there's two lanes of Rax now going the way of OG. They're not going for the GG push. They do have that time, but they don't know that LGD have no buybacks available. They didn't know that the Gyrocopter picked up the Satanic before the fight began. They didn't know about the money. And there's your first buyback. Necro, able to get back to the world of the living. It's not enough. Yeah, it really isn't. This is going to be a full set of racks as Mega Creeps up, they come in for the fight, the Global Silence is out, Wraith King can't really pop much more, that BKB works against him as the Silence is layers on top, Chalice now isolated, and Anna will turn into him, so they're literally hitting themselves, Anna finishes off the racks, and then they can look towards the next target. You can scythe in the meantime, it's over on the ES, but back is in from the Wraith King, Megas are up and running, but the jump forward, Anna, right on top of X Nova. say goodbye to your line, but he'll come straight back again thanks to his buyback, but Chalice isolated, he still doesn't have reincarnation, back up again, and this really is the game, there's no way LGD can try and defend this, even with the scythe onto the Morphling, he could potentially just buy back and come into the fight, that's exactly what's going to happen, Arme turns on the flag cannon, but he's getting stunned up so much, Echo Slam from GRX, they're looking for as much control as they possibly can, but the relocate pulls him back into safety. LGD, they're holding the line, but up against a swarm of OG. Somnus jumps forward again. He does not have that Reaper Scythe available. And they're looking for more. Tornado will not be able to connect. Have to buy a little bit more time. Thomas will burn his own BKB. Sees Thompson is low. Arme flat cannons off cooldown in five seconds time as LGD. Seb, I found the line. It's Somnus over on the edge. Fissure to hold him there. Sunstrike to finish the job. And then they go up for more after the IO. After the man who's keeping Arme up with his flat cannon damage. It's pretty decent, but not decent enough. There's just not enough follow up. The AoE deafening blast. The GRX coming in for dunk. And LGD, there really is no more joy to be had here. GG, well played. OG will get a draw in their game against LGD. LGD. I think they're feeling pretty good about that.